5.2 exponent properties used together. So all that's all we're going to do in this one is now instead of doing one property at a time, you know, adding the exponents, subtracting the exponents, multiplying the exponents, or even reciprocating them, we can do them together. All right, so we may see it happen more than once. Remember, it all is dependent on what is happening to the base. Right? So if you're multiplying the same bases, add the exponents. Dividing the same bases, subtract the exponents. Well, if the exponent's zero, just make it one. Negative x exponents reciprocate that value, the base, with the denominator or numerator. And then if you have stuff being multiplied, uh, or if the exponents on the outside of parentheses multiplied by all the exponents on the inside, even if it's a fraction. All right, so as long as we remember our rules, uh, we can do all these problems, right? Uh, so, uh, I'm, again, I may sh be showing more work than most of you need. If that's the case, I hope it's not, uh, you know, I just hope it doesn't confuse you, right? Remember the three and the two here, I want to show those phantom ones, exponents. And here's why, because we got the exponents on the outside of these parentheses, okay? Um, you can't say, this would be way out of the order of operations to say, do three times two first and then worry about your exponents. Can't do that. Do the exponents first. So I'm going to look at these bases. I got 3 to the power of 1, and then I have to multiply it by the exponent on the outside, too. Okay. In fact, uh, all the bases are going to stay the same. A, the B, and C. I'm just, really all I'm doing right now is focusing on this set of parentheses. I don't even care about this one. And so, you know, I mean, if it, if it helps you, well, just kind of cover it up for now. That's the nice thing about the order of operations. In general, it helps us to split these problems up into smaller, more manageable problems, okay? So for the A, it had an exponent of four, the B had an exponent of five, and C, exponent of four. All I'm doing is multiplying this two by all of these exponents on the inside. So that'd be four times two, five times two, and four times two again. Okay, so that ends up being three to the power of, well, let's put the bases first. Three to the power of one times two would be three to the power of two. A to the power of four times two would be eight, B to the power of 5 times 2 is 10, and C to the power of 4 times 2 is 8. Uh, and, and again, most students don't generally show this, do not generally show this step right here. Uh, I like to show it just so you can remember, hopefully, all the rules that we've gone over, okay? Now, we'll evaluate 3 to the power of 2 here in a second. Let's look at the other expression, okay? So let's actually take a look at this. So we have all of our bases, 2, A, B, and C. And we have all the exponents. 2 has a power of 1, A has a power of 3, B of 5, C of 2. Maybe I should have spaced those out just a little bit. But I am going to be distributing this 3 into each of the exponents. So that would be 1 times 3, 3 times 3, 5 times 3, and 2 times 3, which gives me new exponents for each of these bases, 2, A, B, and C. Now it's 2 to the power of 3. A to the power of 3 times 3 is 9. B to the power of 5 times 3 is 15, and C to the power of 2 times 3 is 6. And yeah, as, as before, there is some multiplication there. It's just not being shown. If it helps you to see it, then put it in there, okay? And even at this point, you can't say, well, it's 3 times 2 is 6, 2 times 3 is 6, 6 to the power of 6. No, that's not what this is. Okay? You've got to evaluate this by the order of operations, especially with these numbers, okay? Here's what I mean, is that you'd have to do 3 to the power of 2... That, which is 3 times 3, that's 9. And then you'd have to do 2 to the power of 3, which is 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. Now I can multiply those. 9 times 8 is going to be 72. Okay? Well, we're going to do the same thing with all of the bases. Let's look at the A's. Uh, hmm. Well, I guess I'll do them. I'll do them down here, okay? So I got an a to the power, and this is all multiplied, so I'd have a to the power of eight, but I also have a to the power of nine. These are all being multiplied, which means that I am able then to just add those together. Okay, so that'll give me a to the power of eight plus nine is going to be 17. I don't know, maybe I, you could have put it over here. I'm just finding a space for the work. Same with the base b's on this. Right, we had a base b to the power of 10, and we also had a base b to the power of 15. All we're looking to do at this point is add those together, which then gives me base b, but 10 plus 15 
exponent will be now exponent 25. Same with the C value on this one. C to the power, if it was 8, and then C to the power of 6 as well in purple. Yeah, these are all being multiplied, so we're adding the exponents. That then gives us C to the power of 8 plus 6, which is 14. And this would be considered uh, our final answer here. I just want to emphasize this again. I recommend showing as much work as you can so that you can follow the steps and it gives you some logic to go back on to, right? Uh, but again, most students don't, they're not show the 3 times 3 or the 2 times 2 times 2. In fact, most students won't even show the 8 plus 9 or the 10 plus 15 and 8 plus 6, that kind of thing. If you don't, that's fine. Just make sure you keep track of what you were adding uh, so you don't get some of these exponents mixed up because that does happen from time to time. Students would be like, well, it's uh, 9 plus 10. It's, it's not that they didn't even know what they're doing. It's just that they added the wrong exponent on that, okay? Which I've done, of course. You, I mean, you've seen me make a lot of mistakes like that. It, it's not like it's a small mistake. You still know what you're doing. It's just a small error. Here's this one, okay? So this is uh, it's, it's kind of a different application, but we see a few different rules here, a couple at least. So uh, you guys try this one out. Try this one out, then we'll go over it. So for problems like this one, I like to start with just the numerator, if I can. If by chance this whole fraction was in parentheses, I would work from the inside to simplify that. But since it's not, I can work with just my numerator first and then the denominator second. There's not really anything to do with the denominator anyways, so I think that makes that kind of convenient. All right, so let's look. What can we do with this numerator? Well, uh, remember, your 6 has an exponent of 1 right there. So when I go to multiply the 5 by 1, that would give me then 6 to the power of 1 times 5 is going to be 5. We'll evaluate that here in a second. But you also have a base y. It was to the power of 3, but now we're going to multiply that by the 5 after distributing it. Okay? Now, uh, a common enough mistake we see on this is where students distribute the 5 to the denominator here. That's only if these were in the same parentheses, okay? So there's nothing we can do with this 2 times y to the power of 2. Just leave it. Okay? And, and in fact, like I said, I'm, I'm pretty much ignoring it at this point. Well, now I will put 6 to the power of 5 in my calculator. When I did that, by the way, I got 7,776. And then we got the base y, y to the power of 3 times 5, which is uh, 15. Okay, we didn't do anything with the numerator right there. So it's just, I'm sorry, the denominator rather. So it's just going to stay uh, 2 times y to the power of 2. Okay. All right, now, I think we can make this a little bigger. But we have this uh, fraction in two parts, right? We got the numbers and then we got the letters, the numbers and the y's. So all I'm focusing right now is the 7,776. I start with the numbers. And I'm going to divide this by 2. When I put that in my calculator, it gave me 3,888. Like this. Okay, and then the y's. So you got the y to the power of 15. So that would be y to the power of 15. And then the exponent of 2 in the denominator. All we're going to do is subtract those, which gives me a new exponent. y to the power of 15 minus 2. I get 13 on that. Now, if this was a negative exponent, I would plan on putting these y's in the denominator. But uh, once again, it, it's more about, is there more y's in the numerator or denominator? In this one, there's more y's definitely in the numerator, which means I don't really have to worry about my denominators at this point. I can just write this expression out. I don't really need the fraction line. So what was it? Well, it's 3,888 times y to the power of 13. There we go. That would be considered fully simplified. Well, here's this one. Now, once again, this problem, just like the last problem, I'm going to split it up into numerators and denominators for this one. Okay, so uh, I'll still have my fraction line, but I'm, I'm not even worried right now about my denominator. So once again, if it helps you just to kind of cover that up, do it. So, so it's not bothering you. It's not it's not causing any extra questions or anxiety here, okay? So, from the numerator, though, we have 
bases of x, y's, and z's here. What is x to the power of 4, y to the power of 3, z to the power of 6? I'm going to take this exponent on the outside and multiply it by each of the exponents on the inside. So that's 4 times 7, 3 times 7, and 6 times 7, which will give me new exponents for each of the bases, x, y, and z. So the x now has a power of 4 times 7, which is 28. The y has an exponent 3 times 7 is 21. And z has a power of 6 times 7, which is 42. Now, for me, that's as much as I can simplify that numerator. So now I will want to see that denominator. So let's get rid of that. And uh, let's take a look. Oh, this is nice because the bases are the same, right? You got bases of x, y, and z. And so x to the power of 6, y to the power of 3, z to the power of, that's a 1. Remember, there's a phantom 1 right there. And if it helps you to see that phantom 1, then do it, okay? But I'm going to take the 6 exponent and distribute it into each exponent on the inside. So that's 6 to the power of 6. That's uh, 6 times 6, rather, 3 times 6, and then 1 times 6. This will give me new exponents for each of these bases, x, y, and z. x to the power of 6 times 6, that's 36. y to the power of 3 times 6 is 18. And z to the power of 1 times 6 is 6, okay? Now, before I continue, uh, we will end up with some negative exponents, but remember, especially if we're looking at a situation like this, it's going to be with the x's, and you can see that there's more x's here in the denominator than the numerator. That means in the end, when I actually do simplify this, I'm going to have some x's in the denominator. Okay, So I'm, I'm kind of setting that up. Um, uh, again, I just want you to be able to think about this, not in such robotic terms, but notice this. There's more x's in the denominator than the numerator. Now, for the y's, there's more in the numerator than the deno denominator, so I'll expect there to be y's in the numerator. The z's as well. There's more z's in the numerator than the denominator, so I'll expect there to be z's in the numerator, like this, okay? So I'm just kind of setting up the answer for this. But I evaluate these one base at a time. So this is all division of the same bases. We'll start with the x's. That means you take the 28 exponent from the numerator, and then you'd subtract the 36 exponent. That's a 28, dang it. There we go. You'd subtract that exponent from the denominator. That then gives me x to the power of, looks like negative 8, uh, which, again, would show, like if you, were, if you saw this on the last section, you'd just flip that and make it 1 over x to the power of 8. So that's why this is x to the power of 8 and in the denominator for our final answer. Now we look at our base y's. So there was a 21 exponent in the numerator, an 18 exponent in the denominator. We're going to subtract those. Well, that would be y to the power of 21 minus 18. I get 3. Uh, since, again, there's more y's in the numerator, that's y to the power of 3 in the numerator, as we have already set up. And then the z's, finally. We got uh, 42 z's in the numerator, 6 in the denominator. Let's go ahead and subtract those. And that will tell us how many z's we end up with in the numerator, by the way. 42 minus 6, 36. So that's z to the power of 36 in the numerator. That's it. We did it. Now, again, I, I explained why there's x's here in the denominator, y's and z's in the numerator. Um, I just want you to be able to look at this after it's been simplified, right, from all this distribution stuff into the exponents. I notice that, okay? Are there more of each in the numerator or denominator? That will tell you where they will go in the final in the final simplified expression. So here's, here's another one, right? And we got a lot of stuff going on in the numerator. Not so much in the denominator, but it's still stuff. Um, why don't you guys take a minute and uh, have a crack at this one, then we'll go over it. Well, if you're still working, you know, finish up, uh, and then see what, you know, if you get the same thing we do, okay? So just to start out here, um, yeah, we're, we're going to keep this as a fraction for now, but it's not, there's nothing to do in that denominator, so I'm just going to keep that there, all right? It, and you could put that there now. You could ignore it if you'd like. Uh, but another thing I'm going to do right now is, is um, ignore this second set of parentheses right there, okay? 
It's there. We'll deal with it. But I don't want to worry about it right now. All I really want to do is worry about uh, this first set of parentheses. So I got my base X and Ys, right? So I'm going to skip the, the work on this one just for the sake of space, really. But I'm going to take the 6 and multiply it by both exponents. So the X to the power of 4, now 4 times 6 would make that an exponent of 24. And then the Y to the power of 3, that'd be 3 times 6 now, which is now an exponent of 18, okay? So that, that fully simplified, I, I did skip a little bit of work there. I hope that's okay. On the other hand, though, we still have that other parenthesis. So let's take a look there. Of course, your exponent of X is a 1. So same base as X and Y. But now I'm going to multiply those exponents by this negative 3 exponent. So X to the power of 1 times negative 3, that'd be negative 3. And then Y to the power of 6 times negative 3 would be negative 18. There we go. Oh, that's going to turn out pretty nice. Now, I'm, st I'm still just focusing on the numerator for me. We are going to have bases of x and y's, but let's look at what the exponents will be, okay? So let's start with the x's, just because it's first on the left. You got exponents of 24 and also negative 3. Those bases are being multiplied, which means you're going to be adding the two exponents. That's 24 plus negative 3. If it helps to put that in the calculator, do it. Never feel ashamed to use your calculator, okay? So that's an exponent now of 21. 24 plus negative 3. Well, we also have the y's. y to the power of 18 and also negative 18. But again, those exponents are being multiplied, so we are adding the exponents. That results in y to the power of 18 plus negative 18 is 0, which, by the way, is uh, 1. That's a phantom 1 right there. Well, it's a 1. I'm going to make it a phantom 1, just... Get rid of it, okay? I'll show the work down here. There's a y to the power of 0, which in the end, we say is just 1, okay? Now, let's let's look at what happens with what we have, x to the power of 21, and we got those denominators, x to the power of 4 and y to the power of 3. Well, uh, just for the sake of space there, yeah, there's nothing to do with that y, okay? So... When I write my new equation, that's still going to be y to the power of 3 in the denominator. But what about my x's? And, and again, right now I can see there's already more x's in the numerator than the denominator. More in the numerator. So in the end, I should have x's in the numerator as well. Well, that would be x to the power of 21 and x to the power of 4. But these ones are going to be subtracted because we're looking at division now, okay? Okay. So this would be x to the power of 21 minus 4, which is uh, 17. So that's x to the power of 17 in the numerator. A little bit more space just to box this in. Yeah, that's good. That's a really good point for this one, uh, because if you had kept this y to the power of 0 right here, then you would have dealt with your y's, right? You'd had 0 minus 3, which would have just been y to the power of negative 3. And then that would have reciprocated into 1 over y to the power of 3. It's the same, same value. It just now you're including that 0 exponent. If you didn't want to make it a phantom 1, of course, I kind of like it being a phantom 1, just so we don't have to look at that garbage. But all right, here's, a good, here's another good one right here. Now, again, if there's, you know, if we had parentheses like this, it would mean something very different, but... We'll get there, okay? For now, let's just focus on the numerator or denominator first. I start with the numerator myself. And so uh, we got the three bases there in the numerator. We got negative 2, we got x, and we got y. Now, the negative 2 has a power of 1 right there. Don't forget that. You got x to the power of 4 and also y to the power of negative 2. What we're going to do is take this negative 4 exponent and distribute it into each of the exponents on the inside. So that'd be 1 times negative 4, 4 times negative 4, and also 2 times negative 4. So uh, that's going to give us new exponents for each. And we'll deal with the negative 2 in parentheses here in just a second, but let's figure out what exponents we have. So that'd be 2 to the power of 1 times negative 4 is negative 4. x to the power of 4 times negative 4 is negative 16. And y to the power of negative 2 times negative 4 is positive 8. Okay, now you could technically right now just move these two bases, the negative 2 base and the x base, to the denominator, which would change those exponents into positive. 
I'm not going to do that because we still have other parts of the denominator to deal with right here, right? So we have bases of x, y, and z. It was x to the power of 2, y to the power of 2. They're all powers of 2, I guess. And we're going to multiply these all by this negative 4, right? So we're going to distribute that negative 4. So that's 2 times negative 4, 2 times negative 4, and 2 times negative 4. All times negative 4. So our base is x, y, and z. 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. So there's negative 8, negative 8, and negative 8. Okay? And yeah, at this point, you could you could start flipping lots of things. I do need that 8. That can happen. There we go. Right? You could say, well, I'm going to flip all my negative terms into the numerators or denominators to change those exponents to positives if you wanted to right now. I'm not going to do that because I have other operations that I can perform, right? Uh, particularly, let's start with the x's. Okay, so I got x. In the numerator, it's negative 16. In the denominator, it's negative 8. And since they're being divided, I'm subtracting there. So that would be now x to the power of, well, negative 8 after the subtraction of the negative. And then we also have y's that can be subtracted. The exponents can be subtracted. So that's a power of 8 and a negative 8. But since they're being divided, we are subtracting those exponents. So that now is y to the power of 8 minus negative 8 is going to be positive 16. Okay. All right. So uh, a little bit of work here. Uh, I guess there's no other base negative twos to deal with, like to simplify this any further, or z's, by the way. So that means I'm, I'm going to have to flip those. Okay, so the, my negative two to the power four, yeah, I'm just going to make that move into the denominator there. And also, well, but now it's a positive four, by the way. I have to show that. A little sloppy, but positive four. And then even my z to the power of negative eight, it moves to the numerator, which then makes the exponent of positive, so it's just positive 8. Okay? Now we got these other two that we dealt with a little bit. The x to the power of negative 8 uh, would change this into 1 over x to the power of positive 8, which means that the x to the power of 8 is just going to be in the denominator. And the y to the power of 16, yep, it stays in the numerator. Okay, because it was already a positive exponent. And yeah, if you wanted to see that as y to the power of 16 over 1, feel free to do that. And, and if it helps you remember that, that's going to be in the numerator. Now, as, as good as this looks, even though my z's kind of look like 2's right here, I try to put that line through it. But we have to evaluate this negative 2 to the power of 4, all right? So this will finally simplify everything here for us, which is what we want. Uh, nothing in the numerator will change, so it's z and y. z to the power of 8 y to the power of 16, and even my x to the power of 8 will just stay x to the power of 8, but my negative 2, right? Uh, yeah, what the heck? Negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. It's going to be positive because there's four negatives. Four is even, so the answer is a positive. 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16. Seems like we've seen that already, but that's a 16 in the denominator because it was negative 2 to the power of 4 in the denominator. So it just stays. And uh, that's it for that one. W with all the flipping that goes on in this one, there's it can cause a lot of confusion. Um, so however you break this up into smaller and more manageable parts, like that, that's what I tried to do right here with my x's and y's. Uh, I, I hope that made sense. But however you keep track of it for yourself, that's, that's crucial too. So the negative 2 has to be in parentheses. Let's explain that here real quick. I'll need a new line for that, though. So uh, negative 2, let's look at negative 2 to the power of 4 like this, right? It expands as negative 2. Seems like we've seen this. Was that from the last lesson? Last section, right? So there's four negatives, which makes the answer a positive. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 16. That's positive 16. If we didn't have, and this is more for calculator purposes, uh, if you didn't show the parentheses but you knew that it was positive 16, that's fine. But if you use the calculator and do negative 2 to the power of 4, here's what it thinks you mean. Because of the order of operations, it would do 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 and then make it negative. Okay? It's like you got a... It's kind of like saying you got negative 1 times 2 to the power of 4. So it's going to say negative 1 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. 
Uh, in which case, if, that, if that's what you did, you'd get negative 16 instead. And so it gives you a very, it's a very different answer, although they look pretty similar. Uh, but again, that's mostly for calculator purposes, but beware because, again, this, is, this really is an order of operations type uh, of concern right there. There we go. This is a good one. Because now we got uh, a full fraction in parentheses right here, right? Now what this means is we got two different directions that we can go. Uh, a, a common method, I don't know. I would say it's probably, it probably is split maybe 50-50, possibly 60-40, right? Some students would do negative 3 multiplied by all of the exponents on the inside, which you could do. My first inclination for me, though, is to simplify the inside of those parentheses because it can be. Why would I do that? Because I don't want to deal with all the numbers if I don't have to, okay? So as of right now, um, I, I kind of want to cross out that negative 3 just because I don't want to look at it so I'm not getting it mixed up with stuff, okay? Which allows me then to just focus on the inside of that parentheses. I'll deal with the negative 3, but just not right now, okay? So what do I got? I got base A's. In the numerator, you got an exponent of 5, and in the denominator, exponent of 4. These are being divided. The A's are being divided, so you're subtracting the exponents, which gives you A to the power of 1. Now, I'm just going to put that as A, and it will be in the numerator because there's more A's in the numerator than the denominator with this division, okay? On the other hand, you also have b's. In the numerator, you have a negative four exponent. In the denominator, you have a four exponent. These b's are being divided, so we're subtracting the exponents. That then gives me b to the power of negative eight. Since the exponent's negative, I'm going to put that b in the denominator, b to the power of eight. Now is when the time comes that I need to remember that I do have the parentheses. Maybe even it'd be good to see the one, right? Because, yeah, there was that. There it is. Exponent of negative 3. And what this does for me now, and it, it, you'll get the same answer even if you distribute the negative 3 back here, but it just allows me to not have to distribute so much. Or, or even add or subtract with big numbers like it could be, okay? Okay. So I'm going to distribute that negative 3 into each of the exponents. I'm still going to have A and B as my bases. Uh, but negative 3 times 1 there for my A base is going to give me an exponent of negative 3. And then negative 3 times 8 is my exponent for B will be negative 24. Well, these, both, these exponents both are negatives, which means I need to flip this fraction which will then change the exponents to positive. So that's now a to the power of positive 3, but in the denominator, and b to the power of positive 24, but now in the numerator. See, So those negative exponents reciprocated both parts of this fraction, and now uh, I got positive exponents, which was kind of the whole point there. Yeah, going back to the b right there. So it was b to the power of negative 8 over 1, but when I reciprocated that to make it a positive exponent, then it was 1 over b to the power of 8. That's why this b to the power of 8 is in the denominator there. Yeah, this is all very new stuff. So, you know, if you're not catching all the rules at one time, you know, it may take some time to really look and think about what's going on in these. The good news is, as long as you can add or subtract, all these rules are brand new, right? We're not looking at slope-intercept form. We're not looking at systems of equations. None of that stuff. Maybe a little bit of solving equations, but even that, I, I would say we're not really looking at right now. Order of operations, yeah. So, yeah, if you're like, I don't want to deal with this negative 4 business because the negatives, I mean, the negatives, they're not as destructive as fractions, but they're pretty destructive. So if you're like, I want to make this b to the power of 4 in the denominator, which makes it positive, right? Then you'd have b to the power of 4 plus 4, which is b to the power of 8, but it stays in the denominator because they would all then be in the denominator at that point. So this one, I don't know. I think it's a little bit more basic. I'm going to kind of run through this one so we can get to those next two problems, okay? But uh, for me, once again, for these, I'm just going to focus on the numerator, then the denominator. So I'm not even worried about that. this denominator right here. You could cover it if you need to. You could cross it out, come back to it, whatever. I just know that in the numerator, I've got y to the power of what is now 4 times 2, which makes that then y to the power of 8 in my numerator. 
And the denominator, though, it's the same base y, but I've got to multiply those exponents, right? 8 times 7. Why is it multiplication? Because of the parentheses, like we saw in the last section. That then makes that y to the power of uh, 56. That, uh, there's my fraction line. That's a good one. Well, now, uh, once again, I can see here that there's more y's in the denominator. So I just know in the end, I should end up having y's in the denominator. But why? What, what, what happens with this? Well, you're going to take your y, you got your 8 exponent in the numerator, and your 56 exponent in the denominator. These are being divided, so you're going to subtract those, right? Just like we saw in that last problem. That then would be y to the power of negative 48. But the negative exponent tells us that really we're going to just put that uh, base in the denominator. You can make it 1 over, 40, 1 over y to the power of 48. So that's why in the end we end up with 1 over y to the power of 48. There wasn't really anything else to worry about with the, with the numerator. Like I said, some students kind of struggle with this because it's like, what the crap goes here in the numerator? Uh, it, you could say it used to be a phantom one, but we need to see that one in the end in order to uh, know what value takes hold of that numerator. I might have to run through these a little, little quicker, more quick than I wanted to. Uh, what I would look for on these is any, because this one's multiplication, right? And we remember from fraction multiplication, you can use cross simplification, which is a very, very crucial skill once you get into 1010, if that's what you need to take. Here's what I'm talking about. I see the 3 and 15. They're both divisible by 3. So 3 divided by 3 is 1. 15 divided by 3 is 5. So I simplified those two values. I also see the 77 and 22. They are both divisible by 11. So 77 divided by 11 would be 7. 22 divided by 11 would be 2. You can only cross simplify. You can't do it uh, uh, horizontally like this. Okay? You can do it straight up and down if you could. Now that's as much cross simplification with the numbers that I see. However, I also see that I can cross simplify with my x's, right? I got x to the power of 5 in the numerator, x to the power of 2 in the denominator, which means that in the end, let's set this up, there's more x's in the numerator, by the way, so it's going to be an x in the numerator, but that's going to be x to the power of 5 minus 2, which is x to the power of 3. So I end up with x to the power of 3 in my numerator. Well, you see the same thing with the y's as well. That's y to the power of 4 in the numerator, y to the power of 7 in the denominator. There's more y's in the denominator, so I should expect there to be y's in the end in the denominator. That's y to the power of 4 minus 7, which would be negative 3 there, but since we already know it's going to go in the denominator, it's y to the power of positive 3. So what do we do with those numbers? Just multiply them. In the numerator, you got 1 times 7, which is 7. In the denominator, you got 2 times 5, which is 10. If by chance we didn't simplify the numbers enough, then there could be a chance to do that further. Of course, you could have put that all in the calculator, right? Like uh, 3 over 22 times 77 over 15. And if you push enter there, it makes it 7 tenths, which uh, I know I did that by hand. Maybe, I don't know, I just, I felt good about it. Maybe better than I should have. So this one, I'm, I'm not even going to worry about, uh, you know what, I'm going to add an extra step in this one. Although, with just the numbers, you wouldn't necessarily have to worry about it, okay? Here's what I mean by that, is if you look at the numerical values from the fractions, 22 over 3, and then the 14 over 15, you could just punch this directly into the calculator, which would then give you the fractional part or the numerical part or numerical basis of the answer, right? Uh, now, I'm going to do that. I just, I just want to show what is happening first, okay? So I'm still going to do that, and it will give me the fractional part of the answer. But this is division with fractions, and so this goes back to 950, 920 kind of stuff. The first value, the dividend, is going to stay the same. But what I end up doing is only multiplying with fractions. So I'm going to multiply this, but this second fraction has to be flipped. So yeah, it's still a fraction. But the 14 times x to the power of 7 is now the denominator. And the 15 times y to the power of 4 is the numerator, like this. Flipped, okay? 
Now, even at this point, you could have just you could just type in the numerical part, 22 times 15, or 22 thirds times 15 fourteenths. Um, I'm going to go back to the original and then let the calculator do that work for me, though, okay? And then it will give me the numerical part of that fraction. We'll still do the x's and y's, but this is uh, the numerical part. All right, so my calculator from that, just from the division right there, you'll get this. No, I typed it in wrong. Dang it. 22 thirds divided by 14 fifteenths. I did, um, no, I think it's the same. I just, what the heck? I'll type it in correct here eventually. So four, 14 over 15. Oh, it is. This. I, I typed it in with multiplication first. Uh, but I just did it with division. I got the same answer, which we should expect. So from this part, I got uh, 55 over 7. So that's a 55 in the numerator, 7 in the denominator. We'll just fill in the other blanks as we go. Okay. Now, I'm not really so concerned with the division at this point, even though I typed the numerical part into my calculator. I'm just looking at my x's and y's. Uh, and that even means that if you wanted to, you could say I'm, I'm not really worried about the numbers at this point, okay? So I'm going to focus first on my x's. I got x to the power of 9 in the numerator, x to the power of 7 in the denominator. That means there's more x's in the numerator. So I'm putting my x in the numerator for my answer. That's x to the power of 9, 9 minus 7, x to the power of 7 in the denominator. So that's x to the power of 2. That will be in my numerator, x to the power of 2. Now my y's, y to the power of 4 and y to the power of 8. So that'd be 4 in the numerator, uh, 8 in the denominator, the exponents. So there's more y's in the denominator, right? So put your y in the denominator. That'd be y to the power of negative 4, but we don't want the negative exponent, which makes that 1 over y to the power of positive 4. y to the power of positive 4. This is it. Is it pretty? I don't know. I mean, it's colorful, but um, pretty? You can decide. Yeah, and I don't know. Maybe it'd be good to see those numbers, whatever.